The Divine Speaker is a story-rich 18-plus BL slash yaoi visual novel where you follow alongside Rain, an orphan from the secluded city of Aurelia Cavella. Expelled from his home on a death sentence, his adventure will take him all over a world he didn't even know existed. Mysteries, magic, fantasy, and more await you in this grand tale of fate and how each person defies it. There are three romanceable guys with a varying degree of of morality. What? I googled last night how long it takes to play this game for the main story alone. 17 hours and 35 minutes. Bitch, what? <laughs> I'm gonna say this now, we're not finishing this today. But, on the bright side, it's full-on voice acting. There's over 15,000 voice lines. So, I'm, you're not gonna be listening to me talk the whole time. I know, it's very aggravating. Don't worry about it. We got voice lines, chat. I'm so excited. You ready? You ready? We're gonna hit start. Oh. If anything sounds weird, please let me know. The birth of a child heralds many things. Change, adaption, confusion. But most importantly, the judgment. Hmm. A newly born child's first destination isn't its mother's arms, but the embrace of another. The divine speaker, the person tasked with determining a child's destiny from the day they are born till the day they die. This destiny is determined by lottery. The speaker's hand, guided by the forces above, always chooses the correct fate for the correct child. This judgment guides them on the path to eventually becoming the person they were always destined to be. Rain, could we pretty, pretty please go play outside? <laughs> it's a child. We promise to be back before it gets dark. Is this us? Oh my god, we're adorable. I quickly glanced over in the matron's direction and she gave me a short nod. I didn't really have the authority to tell them what they could do, but that never stopped them from coming to ask me. Oh well, I don't mind. They knew I could never say no to them. All right, but make sure to be back before sundown. And don't go anywhere close to the forest, okay? We sound adorable. Yay! Thank you, Rain! We promise we won't! But why aren't we allowed to ever play there? Can we go when we're adults? No, you can't. Oh, why not? But why? It's not fair! I know, right? I let out a sigh, but felt a small smile rising to my face. I couldn't help chuckling at their curiosity. They would ask the same question every time they wanted to go out and play. Come over here and I'll explain it to you. I walked over to the table at the far end of the hall. The top was littered with paper, children's books and pencils. Buried among them was a map. Oh! Look closely at this map while I explain. Our home, Aurelia Cavella, is surrounded on all sides by the forest. The forest is full of bad guys and dangerous animals. Do you know why? Because they suck? Because the divine beings don't protect the outside land. Eh? That's right. The beings above protect us while we are inside Aurelia Cavella. But that protection doesn't extend outside of our land. No one can survive out there. That's why everyone lives here, where we can be safe and happy. I know it might seem unfair now, but <laughs> you'll understand when you're older that we're just trying to protect you. Hmm. I have thoughts, chat. Like, this This is giving me, um, cult vibes. Not gonna lie. There's just nothing out there to find. The forest goes on infinitely, with us right at the center. Everyone in the entire world lives here? That feels like a lie. I guess some people might find it annoying to answer the same questions every day. Not me, though. They're curious, and I can't blame them. 
When I was their age, I asked exactly the same questions to the older kids. <laughs> That's right. That's the way it's always been. But what's this place over there? Uh, Zuros? She pointed to a place to the north of the city, with the name of Zuros written underneath it in the map. Ah, Azros? Oh. I don't really know much about it, but... Once you get old, and not old like me, I mean ancient, the divine beings in the speaker reward you for your lifetime of serving them. All the elders go to live there alone in peace and relaxation. I feel like they kill them. I feel like once you're old, they make you go here and they sacrifice them. I hear it's pretty luxurious, but I've never been there. You can only go when you're called upon. Again, this is giving me cult vibes. The kids looked up at me, obviously interested in hearing more. There just wasn't much more to say. No one really knew what it was like in there. The speaker tells us about the luxuries of Azuros, and it makes us work all the more harder to get one day, oh, to one day, get in there. That's all we know about. Is this the premise of Promised Neverland? Ha, uh, AK? Oh god. I've never watched it, but it's fucking terrifying. <laughs> now go out and play before the sun starts setting. They both scurried off out the door, jumping, running, and screaming the whole way. Aw, oh, they really are cute. I'm so happy to have such a great family here. Tobias, Mia, all the others. They're like my brothers and sisters. Well, technically I don't have a real family, but they've always been more than enough. I was dumped on the side of the road as a baby ended up here. Is this like an orphanage? I never knew my parents, so it's hard to be angry about it when growing up here has been so good. Rain, may I speak with you for a moment? Yes, mommy. What? I looked up through the voice that I knew so well. The matron of my orphanage. A tough woman, but caring beyond belief. She's looked after me my entire life, along with dozens of other children. See? AK, now that you said Promise Neverland, all I can imagine is the fucking lady with the hair bun. Of course, ma'am. What do you need? I hope it was okay to let the children out to play for the day. No, no. Oh my it's god, a hair bun. About that. I just like to have a chat. You've been with us for a long time already. I found you in the gutters about 18 years ago today. Ah, uh, has it really been that long already? It's true that I should be coming of age about now, so she probably thinks it's about time for me to be moving on. Yes, it has been a long time. If you give me a few days, I'll say goodbye to the children and start packing up. What? Yeah. I think you misunderstand. She reached into her pocket and pulled out a small envelope. This is for you. Happy birthday. Go and get yourself something nice. That's so sweet. She smiled at me. So full of warmth, but it quickly changed to a scowl. Also, don't think you're getting out of here anytime soon. I'd go out of my mind answering those questions every day. She pushed the envelope into my hands and walked away, brisk as ever. Uh, th thank you so much, ma'am. I'll head out and pick up the groceries you asked me to get earlier then. Uh, be back soon. Bit, it was your money. The old heavy door groaned as I pushed against it. I stepped outside, breathing in the fresh air and enjoying the sunlight. The sun was high up in the sky, and a nice breeze soared through the city. It was a beautiful day. But I couldn't help but notice that the flowers that were in full bloom yesterday were already wilting. Maybe no one watered them this morning. Anyway. I guess that must mean today's my birthday. It's not like I didn't realize it was coming up sometime soon. But it wasn't really at the front of my mind. It's never been a big deal to me. I looked closely at the envelope in my hands. White and simple. This is the first time I've ever been given a birthday present. I'm scared to open it. I almost want to leave it sealed. It's kind of scary being given something out of nowhere. Curiosity was beginning to get the better of me, though. It's always been a problem of mine. Okay, three, two, one, go! I tore the seal open and one fell swoop. Oh, oh my. Oh, yo, we By got money. 
Inside was 10 marks, which was more money than I'd had in my entire life, and a letter addressed to me. Well, let's see. Dear Rain. Dear Rain. Happy birthday, my dear. I'm sorry we couldn't afford much to give you, but I hope it's enough for you to get something you like. The kids have been saving up just for you. Aww. From the day I found you, I've always thought of you as a son. Now that you're of age, it won't be long until you will be matched up yourself and have your own children. Until that day, please stay with us at the orphanage. Both the children and I would be lost without you. I'm sure if your parents saw you now, they would be proud of you, just like I am. Yours, Matron Arala. That's so sweet. Like, this whole thing is sketchy, but that's so sweet. <laughs> oh, it's crying. I couldn't stop myself. My eyes welled up instantly and overflowed all over the letter. Thank you. They saved all this just for me. I can't let them down. I'll go buy something amazing to share with everyone. With determination, I started on my way to the marketplace. Envelope and money buried in my clothing. He gets robbed. The markets were just past the town square, on the west side of, Aure of Aurelia Cavella. The town square was where new children came for their judgments, and where the speaker made his proclamations. The beings above sing praise for the contributions you have given to our humble home. Likewise, they implore you to continue giving your lives over to them, for they provide you with protection from the evils lurking inside the forest. See, this feels like a cult. Huh. Looks like the divine speaker is declaring something right now. Okay, he kind of fine though, Smash. He was dressed head to toe in white and gold, the definition of elegance in his ceremonial gowns. His long, silvery white hair reached down his back neatly. I understand your frustrations about our failed crops, but do not worry yourselves, for the beings above have a reason for everything. Soon you will see why they have put you through these trials. Mm, that feels like a cop-out answer. Oh. Yes, Lord Speaker! The failed crops. Hmm. I think I heard a little about the situation from the matron. It seemed this was the first time in hundreds of years that they failed this badly. And there's some worry about whether we'll have enough or not for this winter. Yes, Lord Speaker. Before I knew it, I was already in the crowd, chanting along with the other residents. The eloquent and beautiful way he spoke was almost hypnotizing. He's a cult leader, y'all. The most highly respected person in all of Aurelia Cavella, second only to the gods. Mm, again, cult. Just being in his presence was amazing. The whole time he spoke, the crowd stood mesmerized. I was so immersed, I didn't even notice he was already nearly finished. In due time, all of you shall be rewarded with the freedom that Azeros brings. With this in mind, I hope you will continue your offerings and duties. Thank you. Applause exploded out from the crowd as he finished his speech. Smiling, he waved and cast his eyes around the crowd. I waved and cheered along with the crowd before his eyes met mine. Almost instantly, a shock ran through my body. <laughs> Uh-oh. The shock changed to heat, and the heat changed to burning. Before I knew it, I crumbled to the ground, grasping, gasping for air, but it felt like my lungs were on fire. Every breath hurt my insides even more. Everyone around was watching me, but worst of all were his eyes, the speakers. I could still feel his eyes boring into me, as if he could see everything, even secrets you kept in the, de the deepest part of your soul. I have to, I have to escape them, now. What the fuck? I forced myself back to my feet, ran as fast as I could and ducked into a nearby alleyway. Oh shit. I could feel the world around me getting darker, blurrier. 
I fell to the ground in a fetal position, sobbing. Abruptly, the pain started to move. It concentrated itself into my left arm with the force of all my previous pain put together. Anyone, please. I shuddered, clutching my arm and enduring the scalding pain before my vision went black. As we're you dying on the floor. Oh. Protect. Protect what? Awaken. Destiny. Uh-oh. Judgment. 